not exactly sure how I'm gonna start this. Oh fuck. Wait, games? I'm not exactly sure how we should start this. I mean, I know a whole bunch of like these video essay things have like a whole bunch of stuff behind them and then there's just me sitting here with like a freaking green screen uh, with nothing else that I know where to put. So like, let, let's start this, I guess. I love Rainbow Six Siege, like a lot. Very few games have drawn me in where I can play for hours on end without getting bored or wanting to put a hole in my monitor. No, also this thing was already broken. I wasn't breaking an actual monitor. So to celebrate the three year anniversary of the game, I want to look at what makes me love this game so much. To get this out of the way, I'm a bit late to the game, figuratively and literally. Like I've said, Siege has been out for three years now, and I've only been playing for six months since the start of Operation Parabellum. So obviously I'm no OG, I don't know how the game was three years ago, so I'm only going to be focusing on the current state of the game as of recording this. So I wanted to get that out of the way, but let's get started. Now, for those who don't know our success, here's the basics. Rainbow Six Siege is a multiplayer first-person shooter developed by Ubisoft and released on December 1st, 2015. Players are put into two teams of five as either attackers or defenders. The attackers are either trying to secure an objective, defuse a bomb, or extract a hawk or extract a hostage, and the defenders are obviously trying to have them not do that. Now that we're caught up to speed, here we go. First and foremost, the strategy of the game. The entire game is based around outwitting your opponents, and the game mechanic that helps achieve that goal the most is destructible environments. Most walls, ceilings, walls, floors, spaces, walls, bottles, TVs, people, walls, doors, dimension walls can be destroyed. Being able to punch a hole in a wall or a ceiling and surprising the enemy team is so satisfying, not to mention those 1 in a thousand so headshots through a wall. When almost everywhere is a possible angle to get the drop on the enemy team, creativity and playmaking increases exponentially. Speaking of playmaking and variety, let's talk about the operators. First things first, I want a movie with these people, or at least Overwatch style YouTube shorts. Something. Anything. Please. We get the written backgrounds of all these characters, all these interactions and relationships between them, it just seems like a waste not to do anything with it. For example, give us more stuff like the Infection special event during Operation Chimera. Like, you have the voice actor for Zelda in Breath of the Wild playing Ash for Christ's sake. This one here is called the Silent Princess. Get them to let go a little. We're not the enemy here. That doesn't really apply to anything, I just found that out and really wanted to put it somewhere in the video. Getting back on topic and talking about how the operators apply to Siege itself, they provide much variety to the gameplay. Instead of applying a class-based system, each operator has their own unique ability, ranging from just a normal hammer, to literally freaking laser cannons, to camera frisbees, to the one and only hostage-killing hockey pugs, just to name a few. As of making this video, there are 42 operators, with two more coming out with the upcoming operation, and you can bet your bastion that I'm gonna list them all. Huh? I get it, because the, the, the operation's gonna be called... Win, win Bastion, and that, that, never mind, moving on. We have the pain on the plane, Mr. Worldwide, your ravaged shotgun wielding Canadian. Who needs body protection when you got cargo shorts? Jamie wants big boom. One thick boy, one Frenchy boy. Hello, yes, I am hologram. How is that not a headsh- Uh, uh, oh. Uh. Hey, you up? Why do you hate me, Ubisoft? Nanobots, roll out. I don't always blind people, but when I do, it's when they're facing the opposite direction. I don't always blind people, but when I- Literally drug dealer turned car battery enthusiast. Why would you put an ACOG on a pistol? Just a man with a big shield. Your drone's cool and all, but can you do this? what I say about tracking dirt in the house? The definition of spook. The definition of bad manners. The definition of a spawn peeking piece of- don't tell me it's a coincidence that they put him with someone with a scar. Ah! Basically a war criminal. Bullying the people with the diffuser since 2016. I see you trying to rush, mind if I- The best at aiming down sights. Honestly, your traps are the best way to end around. The one Deeg master. Something something laser sights. Do you know the Mushroom Man? Previously referenced Psychotic Killer. The champion of 2016 memes. Invisible if you divine invisible by super obvious white bars. I've heard it's a pretty good show. The man who screams way too loud after being zapped by Twitch's drone. The old meme from 2006. The Ice Cream Woman. That's a nice shield you got there. It'd be a shame if we were to nerf it. Cav's absolute worst nightmare. 
if toxicity was a person. And finally, the Lord and Savior himself. You honestly have no idea how long it took to write all that. Anyway, due to the sheer number of operators and unique abilities, not only does this mix up what each round brings, both from you and the enemy team, but it also gives a chance for team strategy by mixing and matching operators. Kind of like this commercial that I found way too funny while trying to find the punchline to this joke. It's a monkey! It's a monkey! But like, seriously, who thought that was a good idea? Like, who greenlit that? Anyway, you can use Thatcher, whose EMP grenades can break all electronics preventing entry on a reinforced wall, and then pair him with Thermite, whose exothermic charge can blow that sucker open. Although their ship name will never beat the Drunky. However, you don't have to think about team strategy if you just want to play, which brings me to my next point. You can have a bunch of different playstyles and strategies, whether it be sitting on the objective waiting for the enemies to bust in, or on your own roaming trying to catch them by surprise. One of the biggest problems I have with team FPS games is that you have to rely on your team. Don't get me wrong, I love having a reliable team that I can get callouts from, but I'm talking about having to change your playstyle depending on who you're playing with. The biggest example I can think of are games like Overwatch, where if you have a team that insists that they can, in fact, win a game without a healer, then you're just screwed. However, in Siege, you can play by yourself, carry, and be completely fine. You might still lose the game, but at least to me, it's not unbelievably frustrating because you can still win a couple rounds. And even though you're just relying on yourself and they're very hard to do, 1v5 clutches are possible and incredible when you do pull them off. Hey, Editing Jackson here, just making sure that my point's clear because I'm talking about team FPS games that require team strategy, where if you queue up solo with a bunch of people that have their own ideas, then you're basically screwed. However, with Siege, when you queue up solo, it doesn't really matter what your other teammates are doing as long as you can rely on yourself, while with games like Overwatch, you have to rely on your team to also do good or you're just basically screwed. Not only that, and this is getting further into personal preference, but I feel like the lack of respawns helped the game be more enjoyable. Going back to Overwatch, when you're getting constantly domed by a Hanzo, and then having to jump into the fight immediately afterwards just to get domed again, that's not necessarily the best morale booster. However, when you get killed after a close gunfight with Sledge where you could have sworn you clicked on his head, having the time to call out where the enemies are and wait for the next round to start is great for calming down and getting your head back in the game. Also, I am in no way saying that Overwatch is a bad game. Far from it. It's just that's the only other game that I play that's similar but different enough to Siege to be a good comparison to point out the mechanics between the two. But just because I start playing solo doesn't mean I'm not going to squad up. And this is where I'm going to start talking about the community. Listen, I know there's toxic people playing this game. There's always going to be garbage people, no matter what game you play. Whether it be people screaming at you in chat, just blatant hackers. But it pales in comparison to the really chill and cool people that I've met while playing. Not to mention seeing the amazing artists, cosplayers, and content creators that love this game so much that they'd make something to show that support. Not only that, the community is still growing, with more and more players joining and playing the game even three years after launch. From what I've read, Siege didn't have the strongest of starts, but over the years it has grown and with it the community has grown into something amazing and something that I am genuinely proud to be a part of. Now, after praising it for a while, I know there are issues with Siege. There are still ridiculous bugs and glitches, the toxic parts of the community are still problematic, the system to stop toxicity in chat is stupid, cosmetics such as the Halloween skins being pay only is ridiculous, and so on. But I didn't want this video to be focused on the negatives, only bring them up when necessary. I feel like the positives of Siege outweigh the negatives, so I don't want to focus too heavily on it, but they are still a thing and need to be addressed. So I'll link to videos that talk about the negatives of Siege in much better detail than I would be able to. In conclusion, Rainbow Six Siege is an amazing game. The replayability, the variety, the strategy, the community, all of it makes into one of my all-time favorite first-person shooters, let alone maybe one of my favorite games ever. So thank you Ubisoft and Siege's developers and everyone who works on the game for giving us such a great, 
gaming experience. I just have one request for you. Don't mess it up. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know this video is late. I meant to get it out by the first, but obviously that didn't happen. It's about three days late, I think is when I'm getting this out. I know that this video took so freaking long to make. Like, I know it's only 10 minutes, but it's probably the most time I've ever spent editing a video. But I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm happy that it's out. I'm sorry that it's late, but... Oh boy. I want to give a big thank you to Kapan Wisark who helped me proofread my script to make sure that everything was good. I also want to give a thank you to Jamsies who helped give me the Overwatch content. All their links are down in the description. Go check them out. They're awesome people. Also, there's a link to all the art and content that I use that all go to the original creators. Go check them out. They're super talented people. And again, I want to thank you guys for watching. This is one of the biggest projects I've ever set myself to. I know it's late. But I'm honestly so happy with how this turned out. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!